All right, all right, all right. Let's see. We're back here to do uh, a paper two problem from 2012. It actually is just on the May paper two um, with probability. 21 points on this bad boy. So that's a lot of points out of 90 um, for just probability, which is a fairly straightforward topic. So let's look at it. Leanne goes fishing at her favorite pond. The pond contains four different types of fish, bream, flathead, whiting, and salmon. The fish are either undersized or normal. The information is shown in the table below. Okay, so they break out all the undersized, normal, and the type. Great. Okay, so part A says write down the total number of fish in the pond. Okay, well this is, um, they're looking for the blank here. Uh, and they're looking for this right here. All you got to do is add these together. 42 plus uh, 48 is 90. There you go. Now, you could also add these together and they would equal 92. Uh, okay, so that's easy. One mark. We're off to the races. Okay, calculate the probability that she catches an undersized bream. Okay, well, an undersized bream, let's see what we got here. Um, undersized bream would be right here. Okay, so there's three of them. So we just do three out of the total, which is 90. Now, you do not have to reduce this. You can just leave it like this and you're fine. Um, you know, you can do it on your calculator and break it down, but I would just leave it like this, personally. Um, all right, now, catches either a flathead or an undersized fish or both. Okay, so this one's a little tricky because, you have, you know, some kids will go, oh, flathead and then undersized, they'll just add those together. But what you really have to do is look at these because you don't want to count this 12 twice. So if I'm going to do undersized and flathead, I'm going to take this one, 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 and I'm going to take that one. Now, if you add that together, you get 15, 33, 42, plus 11 is 53. So for that one, I'm going to get 53 out of 90. And again, I would just leave it. Now, does not catch a whiting. Does not catch a whiting. All right, no problem there. Um, so, you know, Wait, an undersized whiting. Oh, sorry, you got to be careful. Undersized whiting. So 18 out of now, the probability that she, the Leanne catches it is 18 out of out of 90. So we would just do 90 minus 18 because that's the probability that um, you don't catch it out of 90. So it's gonna, just going to be 72 out of 90. And then finally, um, we will do the last one. Catches a whiting, given that the fish is normal. Given that the fish is normal. Okay, well, th if it's this is conditional probability, so they're saying, well, we only want to look at these ones right here, the normal fish. So we're only going to go out of a sample size here of 48. So that's going to be our denominator. Now, what do they want? A whiting. Okay, well, whiting is 24. So we're just going to do 24 out of 48 there, which is one half. But again, you could leave it like this. It doesn't matter. Reducing, you do not get penalized. The one problem kids do have with these is sometimes they'll turn the, des uh, the fraction into a decimal, and then they won't round correctly, and that can be an issue. But um, I would just leave it like this. All right, for the second half of the problem, we're going to do independent probability. So let's see what we got going here. We got Leanne notices that on windy days, the probability that she catches a fish is 0.1, while on non-windy days, it's 0.65. Okay, the probability that it will be windy on a particular day is 0.3. Copy and complete the probability diagram below. All right, these are very, very common for independent probability. You'll see a tree diagram quite a bit. The trick with these is you just want to make sure that each um, row or column here adds up to 1. So if this is 0.3, 30%, this is going to be 0.7 right here. Okay? Now, this is 0.1, so this has to be 0.9. Notice it adds to 1. Here, 0.65, okay, it's going to be 0 you know, 0.35. They add to 1. All right, three easy points right there. Now they're going to ask us some questions about this. Calculate the probability that it's windy and Leanne catches a fish. Okay, so windy and catches a fish. Well, windy is right here, and catches a fish is right here. Now, with Indian... Indi in, uh, any independent probability, uh, you just have to multiply them. So the probability that's windy is 0.3 times the probability that she catches a fish is 0.1. So it's 0.03. So it looks like if it's windy, um, she's not going to catch a fish very often, about 3% of the time. Okay, so Leanne should probably not go fishing when it's windy. I'm just saying. 
All right, calculate the probability that Leanne catches a fish on a particular day. All right, this one's, um, this one is, they always do ones like this where, okay, well, you already have this probability here that she caught a fish on a windy day. Well, now you got to get a fish on a non-windy day. So basically this will be, we already have, we have already calculated for the windy day. We already did it in the previous problem. And that's very common. They'll use the answers from the previous problem. Now, don't worry if you get it wrong. You can still get follow through. But we need to add in this probability. So we're just going to add 0 0.7 times, um, what, 0 0.65? Okay. And, you know, you can type that straight into your calculator. It will do the order of operations for you. And what you get there is 0 0.485. Now, my guess is we're probably going to have to use that at some point. But let's see. Use your answer in Part E to calculate the probability that Leanne catches a fish on two consecutive days. Oh, yeah, okay, we're going to use it now. All right, so, okay, well, the probability on the first day is, you know, 0.485, and then you just need to multiply it by the probability on the second day, assuming there's an unlimited amount of fish here. You just multiply them together, and you get 0.235. Uh, so, you know, if she goes fishing two days in a row, she has a 23% chance of catching fish on both days. Well, okay. Now, given that Leanne catches a fish on a particular day, calculate the probability that the day was windy. All right, now this is conditional probability, and I'm, I'm just going to take this, I'm going to take this problem up here, and I'm going to change colors for conditional probability. How about some orange for the Giants? San Francisco Giants are playing the Cardinals right now. All right, so for condition, conditional probability, um, it's the probability of, uh, that's not really orange, but whatever, A given B equals the probability of the intersection of A and B over the probability of B. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, all that means is that in this case, it would be what's the probability um, that she catches a fish given that it's, uh, wait, what is it? Catches a fish... Uh, calculate the probability that the day get, that it's windy given that she catches a fish. Okay, so B's catching a fish. Well, we already figured that out. We that's right here. Okay, so that's going to be our probability down there. So we're just going to put, you know, 0 0.485 as the denominator. Now the beautiful part is we've also calculated this the, when she catches a fish and it's windy. We did that right there. So that's going to be 0.03 right there. Okay, so be careful on these IB problems because you really have to follow through on them and they often use the same numbers. Okay, so if you do these out, you will get, um, uh, and let me get that out of the way, excuse me. Move, move, wee, move. Okay, there we go. Um, it would be uh, 0 0.619. So she has about a 6% chance um, catching a fish given that it's windy. So anyway, there you go. That's that's an IB problem. That encompasses most of the types of, um, aside from like a Venn diagram, like I did in the last video where you do probability off a of Venn diagram, these are very, you know, a table and uh, a tree diagram are very common. Um, so anyway, hope this helped. Like I said before, go Giants. Um, anyway, take it easy. Late.